Hello there. In this video, we are going to talk about how to measure pressure, specifically gas pressure. We're going to look at three different devices and also the main working principles behind them. If you're ready, let's go. But first, let's uh, do a bit of a quick recap about what is a fluid pressure. So previously in the recording, we have uh, came up to fluid pressure P as equivalent to uh, density times the height, okay, times the gravitational uh, constant G, right? So this H is actually height of the fluid column, okay? And the first device we're going to talk about is a manometer. I'm going to show you a quick demo video first. So what you see here is a manometer. Sometimes we also call this a U-tube because of the shape of this U, right? So on one side here, the uh, column is open and we'll fill it with some liquid. Sometimes it's mercury, but it doesn't matter as long as the we know the density of the liquid. Okay, and this side currently is also open. So let's think about the pressure acting on both arms of your manometer. Okay, so I have here with me a drawing of that manometer. You can see the U-tube shape here. This part is the U-tube. Okay. But the important thing here to know is, number one, this is open end. If this end is open, you will have atmospheric pressure applying force on it. Think about atmosphere as the big brother. It's everywhere. It's acting on all of us because we exist inside an atmosphere. So there's gas around us and that gas will exert pressure. So we have the atmospheric pressure acting directly downwards and atmospheric pressure acts everywhere, okay? It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to have the, the uh, opening pointing upwards. It, as long as it's open to air, you will still have the atmospheric pressure pressing down on the liquid, okay? So what we will have is that these two levels will be the exact same height. Exact same height, all right? So as you can tell from that demonstration video, here, you can see the heights are the same, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to connect this flexible hose uh, with a gas supply, all right? So we're going to wait for this one to stabilize. This side is open end, so the atmospheric pressure is pressing down. And the other side is also open end. Atmosphere is also exerting force in this way. So right now, we will connect this to a syringe. And what this syringe will do is that currently there's gas inside here, right? This part. So the syringe, when we press in the piston of the syringe, let's see what happens to the level of this liquid. So as he compresses, we're going to squish the air. Ah, you see? There will be a height difference. So as you can see, the closer, the smaller the volume here, the bigger the height difference. What does this measure? If you think about this piston uh, pressing down on the air, we are increasing the pressure inside this column. Okay, so with increased pressure, means that this will exert more force on this side, on the right side of the column. Okay, and the liquid will get pushed down and up. So compressing the gas as moving in the piston, the gas compressors pressure increase, this one will press down on this side of the manometer. What is the important idea here and why do we care about this? Notice that um, this pressure difference, there's a ruler at the back, we can actually read the relative heights of these two columns. Okay, a very important idea here is because of the way fluid pressure uh, X behaves, at the same level, we will have the same pressure. So the level here is the same as the level here. Let's bring that to our one loop. Okay, so if you look at the second diagram, this one is connected to the gas supply and we have the gas uh, flowing in and exerting a pressure on the arm B. Okay, so if I'm going to write down here, let's say I mark out this pressure, the pressure of B is equal to the gas pressure, right? And also at the same time, this atmosphere is still there, okay? So the pressure of A is still your atmospheric pressure. But you look at this all. Remember I mentioned same height, same pressure? So this means the pressure of C 
is actually equal to pressure of B. This is the first working principle of a manometer. Whenever you have a liquid column, if the heights are the same, the pressure will be the same. Who say one? Fluid pressure equation. Same height, same pressure, they will reach to some form of equilibrium. Okay, so then you may be thinking, hmm, does this mean that the pressure of gas is greater? Yes, because just now what did we do to the gas supply or the piston? We compress the gas, all right? So if PC is equal to PB, the pressure at B is actually equal to the gas pressure. But what happens to the pressure at C? You imagine, or oh, you look at C and then you look up, what is pressing down on C? You have the atmospheric pressure and you have this H, H height of liquid. So I'm going to call this just the commonly, more commonly used liquid. Maybe this is, it can be any, any liquid you want. Maybe this is mercury. Okay, example. So at C, we will have pressure of atmosphere as always, because it's open-ended atmosphere, plus the pressure of this mercury column, pressure of HCM mercury. All right. So always understand that we have the same level and then we will have the same pressure. Okay. And the next setup that we're going to look at is the barometer. But if you want an example, you can pause the video and check out an example and then come back again. All right. The second way to measure gas pressure but this is more specifically to the atmospheric pressure, it's the barometer, okay? So you can see um, this lecturer here, she is putting mercury into a very small, thin and fine uh, glass tube. I'll talk to you a little bit later why we use mercury. Notice that she's wearing uh, gloves and also glasses, goggles. This is because uh, mercury is actually very poisonous and if it touches your skin, you will get mad hatter's disease. Basically, you'll be a bit delirious. That is no good. All right. So there's an opening here that she will just use something like a pipette to put in that. You see this silvery liquid? Ah, that one is mercury. We must fill it to the brim. Okay. And then with a glove hand, we will press on that glass cylinder and then we're going to invert it into a basin, little tiny basin of mercury. You can see here. All right. So whenever you do this kind of a setup, right, you see all this mercury at the side. Please make sure you clean it properly if you ever had a chance to play with mercury. All right. So she's going to invert this and she will clamp it and see uh, what the pressure is like. Okay. So the mercury actually will flow out a bit until it stabilizes. All right, so this is the basin and this is the mercury column that we will clamp at one place. Okay, so we have the atmospheric pressure pressing down on the exposed mercury. So if you see here, this is the exposed mercury. Atmospheric pressure is pressing down and is pushing the mercury up the uh, glass tube. All right, so it pushes the mercury up the glass tube. All right. So we can use a ruler at the side once again and did what we do for the manometer, very right? similar. We look at the height. So this height is roughly 744 millimeter. Um, in sea level, the pressure of atmosphere is around 760. So I'm guessing that the lab that this thing is conducted in is quite a little bit higher than sea level. But the whole idea is we can measure the length of the mercury column and then put in numbers to find the atmospheric pressure. Let me show you how on one note. Okay, so this is a drawing of that mercury column. Okay, so uh, you will see that at sea level, it should be 760 mm or 76 cm. But maybe that lab, again, was at a higher, maybe it's on top of a mountain or something. All right, but this is my hitch. So again, same height, same pressure. Which point are we talking about? We're talking about this point here. I'm, going to, I'm just going to call this point A. Okay. If you think about what is pressing down on point A, 
Inside this, uh, when you invert the tube, right, because mercury is so dense, there's no way that there's air inside the glass tube anymore. When you fully fill it with mercury, there'll be no air. So what is here is vacuum. Vacuum got no gas, ma, so no air pressure. So if you think about pressure at A, pressure at A is only 76 cm of mercury. Mercury symbol is Hg, okay? Okay, yeah. Only 76 cm of mercury. And at point B, who is pressing down outside B? Atmospheric pressure. All right. So think about this. If let's say there's no atmospheric pressure, when you invert the glass tube, the mercury will all flow up. But because of atmospheric pressure, the atmospheric pressure actually helps push the uh, liquid to keep it in. So right now, we can use the equation pressure is equal to rho Hg and we can put in the density of mercury 13600, height of the mercury column 0 0.76 meter and the acceleration of gravity 9.81. This will give us a value of 101396. I'm just going to coin this 1.01 1 .01 times 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. Okay, so I think you can see in the lab, right, 76 cm is measurable. Of course, you may be thinking, teacher, just now you say, oh, like very dangerous like that. Okay, like if we don't use mercury, because currently, oh, we are saying that the atmospheric pressure here, these two, uh, basically these two things are equal. Uh, okay, so PA equal to PB. I write here again. Uh, PA is equal to P. Same height, same pressure. Okay. Um, why must we use mercury, although it's poisonous? Well, if you put water, right, the density of water is very small. You will need roughly 10 meters of barometer power. Because right now, you're going to uh, measure here. Here is pressure of atmosphere. And... This point here is pressure of water. So let's say I call this again point A and atmosphere is point B. So pressure at A will once again be the same as pressure at B. And uh, pressure at A is rho Hg and pressure of B is atmospheric pressure. Our atmospheric pressure we calculate just now was uh, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the power of 5 pascal. Density of water is 1,000. Height of the water column is around 10 meters. Actually, hang on. Let us find the height. This is 9.81. So if you bring values over, right, you will notice that H will be around 10 meters. Wow, I don't want to build a barometer so tight. Imagine if I have to blow the glass tube. All right. So before I continue to the third method, a few other things to note about the barometer. Number one, even if I put the barometer slanted, I will still reach the same height. Because the whole idea of fluid pressure is that the pressure is equal in all directions. So the height will be the same. I don't doesn't really matter uh, whether the tube is slanted or not. And if you click on the video description of the person or the lecturer conducting this setup just now, she will try this uh, with another mercury column that is thicker. So the diameter is, let's say this diameter is D, this diameter is 2D. It is still the same height. And then she conducted it with another zigzag tube. Like this. Why not? Ornament ma. The mercury column will still be at the same height here. It will still be at the same height. Okay. So the whole point here is if we measure the vertical height between uh, what is exposed to atmosphere and what is inside the column, the pressure is the same. At point A, we have 76 cm of mercury pressing down. At point B, we have atmosphere. When equilibrium is achieved, these two pressure is the same. All right. It is very similar to manometer. Remember this? Okay. When equilibrium is achieved, same height will have same pressure. So you can see pressure at C is equal to pressure at B.
B and C is the same. All right. So the last thing uh, I will briefly tell you, but not go in too deep into it, is the pressure gauge. So the pressure gauge is something that basically looks like a, a pointer. You will see this when you pump gas into your car tires. If you pump gas into your car tires, nah, there's a lever system where the gas supply will actually rotate the needle and also the or the pointer because there's a there's a coil tube here. So you imagine the gas pressure, the gas come in or uh, the gas come in like this, and then it applies pressure. Because gas pressure is in all directions, right? So don't care lah which direction it applies. But the most important thing is it will apply on your lever. Based on your understanding of torque and moment, that lever will rotate the pointer. Okay? So this pressure gauge or what we call Borden gauge, um, you just need to know it exists. You don't really need to know how to read it. But sometimes uh, if they ask you to design experiment, you should know that there's, there's this device like, called the pressure gauge or the Borden gauge. The most popular one that you should know how to analyze is the manometer. So go check out the examples recorded and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.